Hi, my name is Iyad Kawa. I am a physical therapist currently practicing in Southern California. I'm going to share a case with you involving a patient I treated during my neuro residency at Kaiser Permanente in Santa Clara. I have no disclosures to report. The patient I'll be discussing provided written consent to both the ANPT and Kaiser Permanente to share his case. The patient is an 82-year-old male who presented to outpatient physical therapy approximately two months following a left basal ganglia ischemic stroke. His weakness was most notable in his right hip flexors, quadriceps, and anterior tibialis with hypertonicity noted in his hamstrings and ankle inverters. Initial measures revealed a functional gait assessment score of 9 out of 30, a gait speed of 0.29 meters per second, and he ambulated and ascended and descended the stairs at a contact guard assist level with a quad cane. His patient-specific functional scale averaged to 0.67 out of 10 regarding his confidence in performing his desired activities listed on the slide. The patient lives in a two-story home, needs to negotiate inclines around his home, and has a supportive family. His personal factors include comorbidities of hypertension, COPD, and atrial fibrillation. His goal was to return to normal and decrease the burden of care on his wife. Guiding my decisions for this patient were Hornby's 2011 and 2016 publications highlighting the significance of targeting intensity, specificity, and repetition in variable contexts. Combining this evidence with my patient's high level of motivation, I decided to undergo high-intensity gait training with him. In addition to George Hornby's emphasis on intensive gait training in variable contexts, I relied on the principles of neuroplasticity described by Kleiman Jones to further support the use of specificity, intensity, and repetition. My targeted frequency for this patient was once a week. I was targeting an intensity of 15 to 17 out of 20 on his rating of perceived exertion and or 65 to 85% of his heart rate max, which for this patient was calculated to be 98 to 128 beats per minute. I was aiming for 80% of the appointment time, so 36 minutes of a 45 minute appointment to be spent on high intensity gait training. I was planning on the use of overground and treadmill training. This first video was taken during a treatment on March 10th of 2021 with heart rate during this treatment being 123 beats per minute. This is supported by action statement number one of the locomotor CPG supporting the use of moderate to high intensity gait training post-stroke. There is further support by Hornby and Matani in not only challenging patients at a higher intensity, but also challenging their frontal and sagittal stability. This challenged the patient to take bigger steps with intensity further driven by adding weight to his hemipredic right leg and resisting his progression with a TheraBand around his pelvis. This next video was about a month later on April 8th of 2021. His heart rate during this particular treatment was recorded at 112 beats per minute. And this is again supported by action statement number one of the locomotor CPG. The patient is engaged here by challenging his frontal and sagittal stability with a resistance to his progression being applied by the TheraBand at his pelvis and the ankle weight on his hemiparatic right leg. This is supported by Holleran highlighting the importance of challenging the biomechanical subcomponents of a patient's gait and Matani highlighting the effect of challenging frontal and sagittal kinematics post-stroke. This next video is about a week later. The heart rate was recorded at 116 beats per minute during this treatment. We progressed to outdoor gait training as the patient wanted to return to taking walks in the park while talking to his wife as he was doing that prior to the stroke. He was engaged in stepping through narrow spaces around obstacles to challenge his lateral stability while receiving random perturbations to further challenge his balance. The patient was also tasked with a dual task of naming various cities. Comparing the goal fit to the actual fit, frequency was maintained at one time per week during the plan of care. The goal for intensity was met at 65 to 85% of the patient's heart rate max or at an RPE of 15 to 17 out of 20. About 24 to 35 minutes was spent on high intensity gait training 
compared to the goal of 36 minutes of a 45-minute appointment. The treatment involved mostly overground gait training, including progression to outdoor gait training. Barriers were definitely present during my time with this patient. At times, there was a lack of portable heart rate monitors. Therefore, I requested wrist heart rate monitors from the leadership at Kaiser Permanente, and this was approved, and they were able to be delivered. The patient was highly motivated, but not as confident. So I ended up using the patient-specific functional scale to track his confidence during the plan of care while celebrating each of his successes with him. As a therapist, I had my own barriers as I was in my first year of PT as a PT. I was in the first half of my residency and I frequently researched the literature and relied on experienced clinicians. Looking at the patient's outcomes across the plan of care, his FGA improved from a nine at eval to a 17 by discharge. His gait speed more than doubled from 0.29 meters per second to 0.59 meters per second. His initial six minute walk test improved from 394 feet to 522 feet. He progressed to mod eye for gait and stairs with the use of a straight cane and his PSFS upon discharge had improved to 5.83 when it was initially 0.67. When looking at his gait on March 10th, the patient appears to be to take smaller steps on his left due to the weakness in his right lower extremity. His gait is slowed and he remained cautious with his gait at this time. Moving forward to April 16th, he is taking bigger steps. He is improving in his gait speed while also improving to ambulate over a variety of uneven surfaces such as gravel and grass. Some takeaway points that I found to be helpful during this case were barriers may be present. It helped me to speak to leadership reach out to experienced clinicians, and to find ways to be creative. Use resources available through the ANPT website. And salience matters. It's important for us to focus on what is important to our patients. Please feel free to reach out to me with any questions. And I would like to acknowledge Kaiser Permanente's Northern California Neurologic PT residency during their support during my residency year. Thank you.